in the eighth chapter of bhagavad gita lord krishna spoke two important shlokas one is antakale cha maam eva smaran muktva kalevaram antya kala at the time of death if you remember me when you are quitting this body because the soul is residing in this body and when the soul is leaving this body ya prayati samadbhavam prayati you will travel to my planet prayati prayana means travel yana you know yana we heard the word yana means travel ya prayati samadbhavam mat bhavam you will come to me you will travel to me if you think of me at the time of death and the next krishna told yam yam vaapi smaran bhavam whatever you think at the time of death tyajitante kalevaram at the time of leaving your body tam tam evaiti kaunteya that's what you will attain so these are two important deciding shlokas tasmat therefore why krishna is using the word therefore because previously he has spoken some important thing so he is connecting to that and saying therefore tasmat sarveshu kaleshu all the time maam anusmara all the time you think of me you remember me yudhyacha and you do fighting so this is a very bewildering statement this is very very uh, bewildering statement for many many philosophers because krishna told at the time of death you think of me if you think of me at the time of death then you will come to me so the conclusion should be there according to some people conclusion should be tasmat sarveshu kaleshu maam anusmara that's all all the time think of me but why did krishna say maam anusmara yudhya cha you think of me also and you do fight also you think of me also and you fight also why should we do any fighting if at all remembering krishna is what at the end of the time matters if at the end of my life what is going to matter thinking of krishna then whole life i should be thinking of krishna why should i even fight it shouldn't actually uh you know be important thing at all right so for arjuna yuddha is prescribed duty for us there will be many other prescribed duties basically what krishna is saying is you should think of god worship him at the same time you should do your duty also so this <clears throat> brings us a very important discussion about uh 200 300 years back till the industrialization started in the in the modern world the industrialization started around the end of the 16th century where the innovation of the steam engine happened because of the steam engine more the ships were able to travel with bigger uh, capacity ships so that the more transportation import and export all started and the you know commercialization colonization and all started so before that <clears throat> whether it is in india or in the western world or in the middle uh, countries whichever part of the world you travel whichever religion people practiced one thing was very common that was they were telling in their religion whether it is abrahamic religion islam or christianity or hinduism or whichever religion they every religion taught after your death there is some another world where we have to all go like for example in the christianity they said heavenly father there is something called heaven and there is father in the heaven and we are all supposed to go to that heaven and be with the father so in the islam religion they teach that there is some jannat or there is some place where allah is there so we should all go and be there of course in in uh, indian philosophies we learn how if you are a vaishnavate you hear that there is vaikuntha or there is goloka vrindavan and after death you should all go there like here in the bhagavad gita krishna himself is saying you think of me you will come to me and then uh, if you are a shaivate they will say after death you will go to kailas you know like this different different things are there but when the modern world with the technology and science developed technology and science always existed 
but this uh, modern science and technology when it came so that science and technology gave a new idea to people this new invention of science and technology told people there is no another world who has seen that world where is that another world all that uh, hell and heaven is all here only don't believe that there is some heaven somewhere far away which is not visible who has seen it has anybody gone there has anybody come back you know it's a very famous uh, discussion that even so called famous uh, yoga gurus nowadays also speak all this nonsense they say that this place is only heaven this place is only hell there is nothing called there is an another world don't believe in all this another world so this uh, science and technology started telling people this is only one world this is the only world where we are living so this world we will make it heaven this the this is the world whatever you people believe no after death there is some world where we will all be happy everything will be great there everything is nice everything is uh, you know perfect so he said don't worry now that science and technology has come we will convert this place only that heaven this only we will make into wonderful place whatever your problem is there we will solve it so this place becomes heaven so they said okay you have a disease like bhagavad gita says what is that janma mrityu jara vyadhi oh you got vyadhi you got disease that's why you are calling this place as a you know a improper place and there is some spiritual place and all. don't worry we will find out medicines we will remove all those diseases we will eradicate all the disease so that this place becomes a better place so now you have a tra- problem to travel don't worry we will invent a technology where you can uh, you know travel very fast so like this whatever problem you have got we will solve all those problems and this is the only place so if you take now there are two things bhagavad gita is saying you will come to my place that is what bhagavad gita is saying if you think of me you will come to my place krishna didn't say in bhagavad gita you think of me in this world only you will live in a better way like that he didn't say that no way he says that he says you think of me at the time of death you will come to me and there is my place he says uh, paras you know uh, in the 15th chapter uh, what is that verse paras tasmat bhavo anyo anya anya means other other than this paraha and that is uh, superior higher like this krishna says natad bhasayate suryo na shashanko pavakah tad dhama paramam mama my dham my place is in all the way it is better superior like this krishna is very clearly spoken in bhagavad gita there is an another place apart from this place right but the the what is a materialistic people philosophy materialistic people philosophy is this is the only place that other place which uh, all this so called your uh, religions are promising you it is all imagination it is all unreal it doesn't exist this is the only place and this is the only place and this is the place we should make it heaven this is this is the place we should make it spiritual place so this is one type of philosophy so what have they done in the last 300 year 400 year they worked very hard to make this world into a paradise into a heaven but they have miserably failed they have invented everything that is possible the fastest transportation they have invented fastest communication they have invented you can quickly call anybody anywhere in the world for almost free of cost like yesterday this sunil mittal the head of uh, airtel has told this people are using 30 gb internet and are not paying anything free of cost so like this internet is free video call is free you know people can see each other and you can in one hour you can travel from here to delhi and meet somebody and so many medicines so mri scanning ct scanning and wonderful hospitals and you say my eyes are not visible laser technology operation and you know everything you can imagine it is available but what has happened crime has increased corruption has increased violence has increased 
number of wars have increased starvation has increased right infidelity has increased everything has increased so all their attempts to make this place a heaven has utterly failed they said oh look we have solved the polio india they declared as polio free country and they will the moment they declare our country is free from one disease or new disease will enter so covid now again the covid uh, scientists are saying this covid increases the heart risk once it comes it will not go it will bring some this way that way you know all this thing so <clears throat> finally you cannot claim that you you have declared this place into and now the not only physical problems the psychologists say that 7 out of 10 people are going through depression suicidal thoughts they want to end their life so where have you done this place into a heaven with all your attempts so those who believed this is the only world this is the only world let us make into heaven with our science and technology so they have utterly failed but still they have not given up the hope they keep promising in future we will make this into heaven you know like this anyway so this is one type of people so after they some people now they are not ready to believe that there is another world spiritual world so now they accept this is the only place now after trying so much trying to convert this world into heaven and when they fail they feel that this world is also miserable this world is also miserable that's a practical experience for everybody right everybody every day has this experience this world is a miserable place and somehow they, they they don't believe that there is another world which is a perfect world happy world so another world also doesn't exist for them this world is also very difficult to live so there is one famous philosopher so he says it is so miserable there it is so miserable that this world is full of problems and suffering and uh, another world is all imagination so the only question we can ask is when can we end our life in this world that sort of appears because anyway there is no another better world perfect world happy world it's all imagination and this world is full of problems and which they have tried and we also have tried and it is not solving so why should we live what is the what is the purpose of life why should i be alive because this world is full of problems and so many miseries and one after other you know suffering keeps coming so he says the only question we can ask is should i commit suicide today or tomorrow because it, nothing else makes any sense anyway it is suffering so you can decide today i should suffer or till tomorrow should i suffer so better should i commit suicide today or tomorrow see like this people come to conclusion there are philosophers they say that your existence itself is suffering so you end your existence here also suffering anyway there are everywhere suffering so this is a second philosophy what is the second philosophy what is the first philosophy first philosophy says because we have discovered some modern science and technology and why should we believe in all the so called mythology which talks about vaikuntha kailasa heaven jannat and all forget about all these things who has seen that it's all false promise this is the world which we see this is the only world which we can live so let us make it heaven so what has happened their attempts in the last 400 years it has failed see now how so many countries uh, are keep threatening in now somebody was telling pakistan is going through some serious economic crisis i hope you all know that right there's like so much they they can't even buy uh, food to eat that much it has become so now they are saying that international monetary fund should give us some money 6 billion dollar something like that you now somebody may say why should anybody give let them know. nobody should give money you know what is the problem they're saying if you don't give money we have atomic bomb so we will blast the atomic bomb it's like i will commit suicide but when i commit suicide i will also take you and uh, die so this is how i will commit suicide so now they become a threat if you don't help 
not only we will destroy we will also destroy you along with us with our atomic power just see this it's a it's a result of so called science and technology you see isn't it so their whole attempt that this is the only place and let us make this place into heaven has disappointed them so now what is there as a result of this what is the second philosophy there is no spiritual world this world is also miserable world so better we should we should end our life as early as possible because anyway there is no next life the another life and all no this is the only life and this is the only place better you end that life why should somebody to continue to suffer what is the goal in continue to suffer better you end this life so so there is another one the third philosophy the third philosophy is this philosophy says uh, brahma satya jagan mithya this is an, it's another one interesting philosophy it says that the other world the spiritual world is a reality but this world is an illusion what does that philosophy says brahma satya brahma satya means brahman is spiritual that is satya that is a reality jagat mithya this jagat is a unreal it's an illusion they give an example like dream when you are dreaming there are two things one is real world another one is dream world so dream is a dream it is not a reality right but but when you actually wake up you wake up to you wake up to reality so their philosophy is there is one spiritual world vaikuntha or whatever it is you call brahman or whatever that is a real world and this world is it is is illusion mithya illusion so what is the result of this philosophy can anybody say what is the result of this philosophy what happens if somebody follows this philosophy you render our reaction yes you end up not doing any action here why because it's anyway it's false it's unreal it is imagination imagined world it doesn't make any sense what you do here has no meaning what you do here has no consequences what you do here has no result no profit why should i do anything here so this leads to a very disastrous behavior what is that behavior you become extremely callous become very lazy towards the duties and responsibilities of this world and in fact historians say historians say this philosophy is the single most reason why foreigners invaded india when the mayavada this philosophy is called maya maya because they say this world is maya illusion and that is real some other some spiritual world is a real world so when they spread this philosophy all across india so people started thinking why should we do anything in this world how does it matter how does it matter what you do here whether you win whether you lose whether you get fame or whether you get infame whether you get success or you get failure how does it matter at the end of the day this is all illusion this world is a illusion so why should we work hard for any success so the historians they point out that this is one of the reasons predominant reasons why foreigners invaded india like many times many people ask this how such powerful kings were there how this foreigners invaded we see that so much uh, science and technology was there in india so much power was there so much capacity was there why indians didn't do anything indians didn't do anything because they were practicing this philosophy so how does it matter whether you come and conquer us or we defeat you you defeat us you rule we rule you do this i do this at this i have to simply become become what become inactive in this world there are many philosophies there are many organization even today they teach this philosophy they say that you should simply become inactive and irresponsive in fact if you give response in this in this world you'll get entangled if you become active in this world you become entangled so what should you do you should become 
silent or you should become inactive or you should become irresponsive don't do anything so this is the one of the predominant reason why india became such a weak country politically secondly why it became poor day by day because people why should i do anything why should i work hard why should i earn any money you understand because this brahma satya jagan mithya this is the see every philosophy give certain behavior every conviction every conclusion gives result to certain action and behavior and what is the behavior of this third philosophy they agree that there is some some reality beyond this world but they also conclude they also conclude that this place is is unreal this place is unreal so what is the first philosophy there is no there is no reality beyond this world that's what modern philo people say right that is called hedonistic philosophy they simply think all that exist is this life and uh, this world and simply go on enjoy maximize your enjoyment in this world so they tried it and when it is not working out some people have become frustrated so frustrated people have said there is no spiritual world also this world is also full of miseries so better we end our existence so that's the second philosophy what is third philosophy this world is not real that world is real so we should go to that real world so what should i do with this world i'm here right now in this world no so what should i do just be na inactive don't do anything just be like inert uh, you know some ka unconcerned don't do anything so what is the real understanding from bhagavad gita this shloka is saying what is this shloka is saying tasmat therefore because krishna before this verse he spoke about another world what is that if you remember me you will come to my world so he krishna now spoke about his world tasmat therefore he says sarveshu kaleshu all the time ma manusmara you think of me and yudhyacha you should also work in this world so what is bhagavad gita philosophy the fourth philosophy that world is also real this world is also real what is bhagavad gita's conclusion krishna's conclusion that world is also real this world is also real what you do in this world is going to decide what whether you will go to that world or not and you can't ignore you can't ignore and become inactive and unconcerned and irresponsible in this world you have to be very active yudhya and in that yuddha you should think of me the actions of this world the responsibilities of this world the duties of this world will take you to the next world see this tasmat sarveshu kaleshu ma manusmara yuddhya cha ma manusmara yuddhya cha mai arpita manobuddhi in this way you engage your mind and intelligence mame vaishyasi asamshaya without doubt you will come to me that means being engaged in this world without doubt you will come to me see this krishna did not say that uh, you know in this world you be inactive and you still come to me krishna said how you keep yourself engaged in this world that will decide what will happen to you so this is the bhagavad gita perspective we say what is that this world is also real that world is also real what actions you do has consequences this is not unreal like in dream you can do anything let's say in the dream you you steal somebody's gold is there any consequences for that 
there's no consequences for that it is it's it's free from any consequences that's what that brahma satya jagannitya philosophy says it says a dream whatever you see in the dream has no consequence so whatever you do here it has no consequences if you steal in the real world you will have consequences so in the dream whether you steal whether you so you see even somebody practices this philosophy imagine somebody commits a rape murder so what is what does jaga brahma satya jagannitya philosophy followers according to them how should you understand this how how will you interpret this now let's say somebody comes to you you are the follower of that uh, brahma satya jagannitya brahma satya means the spiritual world is real this world is illusion so somebody comes to you and say see we saw there was one uh, criminal he committed rape or he committed a murder so according to your philosophy how will you explain it now you say what, what is your explanation all of you apply your mind and say Okay. Now, well, if somebody has come to you and say, "I'm suffering because this person uh, did like this to me," so to that person, what will you tell? You are the affected party, so you approach. Here is one counselor who practices this philosophy. So he's uh, you gone to him and say that, "See, this has happened to me." So what will you tell that person? No, they'll say it is all unreal. Your suffering is unreal. Now you should imagine if something happens to you and you're really suffering, and somebody tells you it is all unreal. It is all some imagination. It is all illusion, and you're going through that stomach pain, or you know, some uh, somebody has really cheated on you, or somebody has hurt you. Are all the things, and when somebody tells you it is unreal and all, how does it feel? How does it feel? Let's say you know you work for thirty days very hard in your office, and uh, your owner says, "I will not give you salary," and you go to this person and say, "Sir, I didn't get salary." You know, like it's all unreal imagination. Don't worry, it's all um, you know mitya. How does it feel to hear that? It feels. you know so i mean hurtful what are you talking my suffering is it's real suffering and you're telling it is unreal does it uh, uh, soothe the person does it calm the person does it uh, you know help any way so if you go to a second philosophy person who believes in any way there is no other world this world is full of suffering if you go to him and say what will he say he says today only you should commit suicide why because see at the end of the day this world is full of suffering so why are you continuing see already it say this is a proof that you should end your life as early as possible because continuing your existence means more suffering so what is the first philosophy person will say will you don't worry we are working on some science and technology we will try to you know we'll come up with some pills when you when somebody you know when you go through this kind of things you take this uh, pill you will feel better or maybe we'll come up with some machine that will uh, forget, forget your something like this but what does bhagavad gita say now you apply bhagavad gita philosophy and say so somebody has come to you and say this somebody has not given my salary i work 30 days what should i do take action what action i should take mm-hmm. go to the court complain go and ask do this it says do your duty it doesn't say that you know you ignore it you just become unconcerned you become inactive don't bother about it, it doesn't teach such things just imagine e now think economically socially and politically how bhagavad gita message is a real message <coughs> because when when enemies are attacking you you apply the philosophy now 
If you apply Bhagavad Gita philosophy, what does Bhagavad Gita say? You fight. You should fight. Your enemies are attacking. You should. No, no. I at the anyway at the end of the life, I'm I'm supposed to just remember you. No. So I will go somewhere in the forest and I will do more chanting and I will increase my remembrance of you. Why should I fight? This world is anyway not real world. Whether you rule or they rule, it doesn't matter. You see. Exactly, that is the whole point. The point here is, for for that you need to understand that yes, I have to do those activities that increases my uh, remembrance or my connection to Krishna. That means that you cannot be inactive here. It is just a matter of choice that which action I have to choose. But you have to act. You have to act. Inaction is not the con- re- conclusion. Inaction is not the conclusion. Now, economically, India has been a very prosperous country in the history. Very well-to-do country. Right? Why India became so poor? Because people developed this kind of a very, you know, uh, lethargic attitude. Anyway, how does it matter? Anyway, you should just die. That world is a... Somehow Indians still believe that there is some higher reality. Not like that nihilistic philosophy. Nihilistic philosophy means there is no uh, meaning here and there is no meaning anywhere. There is basically there is no meaning. That is the meaning of nihil. Nihil means zero. They are also called shunyavadis. So nihilistic philosophy means shunyavada. So uh, nowhere any meaning is there. So you should simply die. That's all. So, but Indians, they say there is some reality. But the, that reality is not here. So, don't pay attention to this world. So, socially, they imagine there is some social injustice to you. There is caste discrimination, gender discrimination, or any other discrimination. So, this philosophy doesn't allow you to fight. It doesn't allow you to seek justice. It doesn't allow you to solve it. It says somehow you ignore, no? Somehow you just uh, don't pay attention to it. It is all illusion. It is all uh, imagination. Your reality is there. But you see, there are so many uh, this kind of uh, people. They do so many good things in the sense like that. Sorry. Uh, people, uh, people, people will uh, this kind of uh, philosophy. They do so many charities, so many uh, Unfortunately, they are the one who are doing maximum, uh, you know, uh, social charitable activities. That's an interesting question. Why do they do this? Anyway, they don't believe this world is real world. Then why should they do all this charitable act? This is a contradiction of their own philosophy, which Prabhupada points out. Prabhupada says from a shloka in 10th canto Srimad Bhagavatam, Ye Anye Aravindaksha. The verse Prabhupada quotes many times and say, these people say this world is unreal and they think that Brahma Satya and they go to Brahman. And uh, so they can't remain there because the symptom of the soul is to be active. And their uh, their so-called other world is inactive world. So they'll again come here and they want to be engaged in activities. Yeah. Contradictions have come. So, the, the, you hope you all understand what basically Krishna is saying in this shloka is that connection to Krishna, contribution to this world, both should happen both simultaneously. What is that? Mamanusmara is connection to Krishna, connection to God should be there in your life. At the same time, Yudhyacha, contribution to Contribution to this world. In a such a way that contribution to this world increases your connection to Krishna. That is the key here. Contribution in this world should increase your connection to Krishna. Such a kind of engagement, asamshayaha, without any doubt, it will take you to Krishna. So, our philosophy, Krishna conscious philosophy is you must be engaged 
like the way arjun was engaged that is why the devotees are busy they get up early in the morning 3:30 4 o'clock and from that time onwards they are busy so people will say you are all spiritualist why are you all so busy why do you all look so tensed why do you all look so stressed out why do you all look so busy and occupied be calm and you know be sitting on some place and look very cool and you know look like some spiritualist means shanti 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 hi you know somebody goes uh, the they say what's aap itna kyu you know bhag rahe ho idhar you know they say ek bhag daudna nahi chahiye so this this whole this uh, you know philosophy looks very calm and silent is actually coming from brahma satya jagannath you don't have to do anything here be cool be calm don't be disturbed let whatever happens happen what is the explanation that being being inactive you go to the other world no actually they say whether you are active or inactive it doesn't make any meaning in this world so because being active does not make any sense just be inactive no you should by by not responding anything you will go to that spirit don't respond that is that's how you get entangled in maya affected but they say you know do meditation yoga this that is all for uh, beginners they also build temples they also do everything and they say it is for beginners because you are so uh, you know accustomed for this kind of a life so step by step like they give example very famous example is you need ladder to climb and once you climb what should you do with the ladder you should kick that ladder so they say like in our philosophy we worship guru we worship krishna they also worship guru and krishna then you will get confused are you see they are also doing like us they say till you attain that nirvana or samadhi you need all this guru krishna and all after that once you attain the nirvana samadhi or brahman platform what you have to do with your guru and uh, this god what should you do reject literally they say this i mean it is very common they say you have to reject it that is a sign that you have made advancement you have to reject it see this anyway leave aside the philosophical impact think of political impact think of social impact think of economical impact what do we say we say that you build a temple so much economic prosperity will happen around that place so many people will get job so much uh, that's how you see in india wherever uh, if you go back 50 years back all the big cities in india city in sanskrit is called pura and all where are dwaraka puri jagannath puri mathura puri varanasi pura isn't it pura the cities are always developed where the god is the center kanchi puram ayodhya pura all this place where dhams are there that is where the cities and where the population was populated maximum population now that they have rejected that the first philosophy which is now focusing on only this place let us make this place into a heaven that is uh, modern science and technology wherever modern science and technology is growing those places are developing now mumbai bangalore you know like this uh, hyderabad uh, you know all this kind of cities where the the technological uh, campuses are developing so that is where the city is developing you see how all this philosophies finally impact impact economic social and political consequences so bhakti perspective of this world is a very practical and the proper perspective of this world it does not make anybody lazy fellow it does not make anybody uh, run away from one's responsibility in fact bhagavad gita teaches there is a karma vikarma akarma you should be very careful which karma you should do kim karma kim akarmeti kavayopi atramohitah 
Krishna says, be very careful which karma you do. Because some karmas keep you here, some karmas you send you to spiritual world. Because this world is a real world. But Maya was just there to tell that karma. Hmm. Yeah. Yes. That's what Krishna is saying. Tasmat Sarveshu Kaleshu. This Sarveshu Kaleshu is for two things. Mamanusmara Yudhyacha. Because the word in Sanskrit used in this verse is Cha. Cha means and. Think of me and fight. So for that the common, uh, what is that, um, prefix used here is Sarveshu Kaleshu. All the time you think of me and all the time you should fight. That as I told you, connection to Krishna should lead contribution. And the contribution in this world should increase your connection. This, this has to happen. That means keeping this philosophy, even you think of a family life. Let's say somebody says, now should I become a family person or not? You apply this philosophy. What is this philosophy? If being in a family situation, your connection to Krishna increases, you should do it. That is the whole philosophy. You should not run away from it. By fighting, by fighting, your connection to Krishna increases. You should fight. Like in Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna first told that I will not fight. But when he realized that, that Krishna wants this fighting. And if he fights, it increases his meditation on Krishna. He agreed to fight. That's why recently one famous uh, viral video that's going on. Somebody asked Prabhupada This uh, Gandhiji brought, uh, what is the independence to this? Prabhupada said, nonsense. This non-violence is nonsense. This non-violence never brought independence to our country. It is the uh, Bose, Mr. Bose, who actually, uh, you know, he threatened the British with his army. And British actually got scared because of his army and that uh, revolt that uh, Bose organized. And he, they decided to leave this country. And Prabhupada said this non-violence is politically never possible. You can never practice non-violence in politics. It's never possible. So likewise, if there is a war that is required in this world, you should. if you are a devotee, you should be prepared to fight. So all this philosophy, you see, there was an attack on Iskon temple in Bangladesh. They attacked, they killed devotees, they broke the deities and uh, they wreck havoc in the temple and people were not prepared for it. Because they were thinking, no, we will just, you know, uh, uh, something, some wrong idea of the life. You should just simply sit and chant. You know, you should also do yuddha. Yuddha means it could be, you know, protecting yourself or hiring whatever security is there. Everything that is required in this, because this world is a real world. In this real world, there is hatredness, there is love, there is jealous, there is envy. There are good people. Everything exists in this world. So you should be prepared for it. In that way, Prabhupada also, like sometimes some people say, oh, why in this Hare Krishna people, no, they ask donation, they ask, you know, people give money and all. Because this is a real world. In this world, you want to do anything, you need resources. For this, uh, because Mayavada has spread so much in this world, in the, our country, sometimes people think, why... You know, the spirituality means you should not go behind this money and all. Yes, of course you should not go behind money if that makes you disconnect you from Krishna. But if the same money is required to connect you to Krishna, like if you have to build temple, because temple, in the temple, when hundreds and thousands of people come, they all get connected to Krishna. They all learn about Krishna. They see Krishna. They hear about Krishna. They remember Krishna. For that you need money. For that you need land. For that you need, uh, you know, uh, resources. So for that we have to work for it. Just like Arjuna has to fight. 
to establish krishna's mission like that if fighting for some of us could be bringing resources for our organization that increases our own connection to krishna that increases many other people also to krishna so we should not become mayavadis who believe that you know i should become inactive and i should only think of krishna it can mean anything it can mean fight if somebody attacks your temple if they attack your cows or they attack your resources go and fight that's the philosophy of bhagavad gita don't run away from it running away is nothing but mayavada philosophy not acting not doing anything so there are basically four philosophies which we discussed today the first philosophy thinks that uh, there is no other spiritual world this is the only world which we are seeing which we are experiencing better make this world into heaven with our science and technology but unfortunately in last 300 400 years they have utterly failed it so in fact all the miseries and suffering has increased so as a result of that though some people get frustrated they say that there is no other world this world is also problematic better we should end our life as early as possible we should end our life the third philosophy says no 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 this world is uh, unreal world that there is some real world spiritual world so that's why don't do anything in this world it doesn't count it does not count like you know when i was in um, college engineering college there was one subject it doesn't count in your overall percentage you have to just pass that's all you, but it does not count to your overall cgpa or percentage and all so do you think they, anybody took it seriously what do you all say will you take seriously if there is such an option like that nobody took it seriously nobody studied seriously that was what do you think that subject name was constitution of india just imagine constitution of india was there as one of the subject but it doesn't count in your overall uh, percentage so nobody studied it properly simply we were told and it was a multiple choice and they told for everything select president of india you will pass <laughs> over that's all so like that this maya the philosophy says yeah this world is there but it doesn't count so what will you do you ignore this world you become lazy in this world so called uh, you know being serious in your spiritual world but the real understanding is krishna says sarveshu kaleshu ma manusmara yudhya cha you think of me you worship me become my devotee become serious surrender unto me at the same time you fight in this world for me because this world is also real if it is any way imaginary world why should krishna say you should fight he say ignore it don't waste your time and energy just leave it become inactive can you imagine using the same bhagavad gita mayavadis have given interpretation of mayavada and spread same bhagavad gita just see this how you know people can be misleading so this is what it's very very serious very important because uh, uh, if you have wrong conclusion wrong behavior will come this way we should have right conclusion so we should not be hesitating we should not have any uh, what do you say concern hesitation shame oh i i should not be doing this i should not be doing that that is why prabhupad trained devotees in this hari krishna movement to do all services we don't shun away oh this sadhu should not it could be cooking it could be fundraising it could be taking care of cows it could be building temples sometimes people can't understand this why are sadhus doing all these things they expect sadhu should be only be doing either puja or he should be speaking some uh, philosophy or they should be just sitting and chanting anything else you see sadhus doing they can't understand that oh why are they doing like this isn't it it becomes very difficult for them because we follow bhagavad gita philosophy we do mamanusmara also we do yuddha also so that is krishna's instruction to reach him we'll stop here 
ग्रंथराज श्रीमद्भगवद्गीता की निताय गौर प्रेमानंदे